Happy New Year. Hey, hey, Allison, how are you? Hey, Josh, how are you? I didn't expect to see you in this meeting. Yeah, um, I was like, well, someone in my work like was like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna go check out this this uh, contributor strategy stuff, and I'm like, this contributor strategy stuff, and I'm like, this is that this is that sig that I keep hearing about, and I need to you know, want to see what y'all are up to. <laughs> Hey, Allison. I was just talking to George about you. We were talking about how we're both in London, but locked down and can't get together. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Stuck in a lockdown. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But hey, if you never, if you ever need anything or advice or anything, I'm, I'm right here in London. So don't hesitate to, to reach out if you ever need anything. Mm. And then yeah. when we're not locked down, we will totally get together for coffee, tea, cocktails, whatever, whatever you're into. Yes. Love that. Oh. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I've been here for a couple months now and I'm like, whoa, this is so much different from New Zealand. Yeah. Yep. Hello, Scott. Oh, hi, Scott. Da -da, connect into audio. Da -da -da -da. Trying Hello. to figure out what that thing behind you is, Allison. A box oh, this? Equipment. Yep. It's a it's a case for fractal design. Um. The it's a it's a little computer box, computer box. Okay. Scott, I like your background. That feels very like 80s senior pictures. Oops, we can't hear you, Scott. Hey, Charles. Uh, how about now? Yep. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I, I think I, I think I had one of these uh, from my my uh, high school yearbook. Okay. Yeah, I I looked for some way to actually do a max headroom background um, for for my conferences, but then I decided it was going to be too much work. <laughs> you can still do that. <laughs> the um, I actually hadn't realized until I looked it up that there were hardly any computer graphics involved in max headroom at all. Hmm. It was it was all film tricks, including a very uncomfortable costume. Really? Yep. Oh. Yeah. So like <clears throat> the the weird, you know, square suit that he's wearing and that thing that was an actual suit. That's funny. I was just assumed that most of that was computer generated. No, computer graphics at the time weren't capable of doing that. Yeah. Um not not without like renting all of SGI. So Okay, well we should get started. Um and this being um the first meeting of um a new year as well as the first meeting that we've had in a month. Um I thought we would start out with talking about to do's and things that people plan to get done would like to get done um, in maybe the first half of this year. Um, so the um, um, I will say I'll, I'll break the ice by going first and I'll say for my part um, um,
finish uh, project paperwork guide um, for general project paperwork as in the things that you need to have um, and then use that as sort of a jumping off point for additional templates that we need. Um, 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 I actually want to add some stuff to the leadership guide, um, specifically around CNCF requirements about things that have come up. Um, I, for example, that, you know, will your project can have a single project leader that needs to be an elected position and not one that's appointed for life. Um, the, um, um, so um, get, get sort of more specific on that. Um, and then add, add relevant templates for all of those. Um, one thing I'm a little hesitant, one thing I'm a little hesitant to bring up, actually I should bring this up as a separate agenda item. I'm going to bring this up as a separate agenda item, which is the idea of governance review. Um, so Dawn, any goals? Yeah, I am still, uh, I'm still going to work on that charter document, um, which got derailed with all of the stuff I had to do before I took three weeks of holiday. Um, and then my, my next three weeks are a little bit busy because we've got this big internal event, but I should, my time should free up last week of January, early February. So I hope to get a good start on it then. And I think that will once I start working on the charter documentation, I think that will spawn some additional additional templates and probably some additional documentation that we need. So I'm hoping that will kind of, whoops, kick off into some other stuff. Too. I just need to carve out time to do it, but it's on my it's on my to do list. Okay. Um. So anybody else have governance plans, goals for the upcoming year? Charles, Scott? Allison just well, joined I, us for the first time, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is my first time joint, actually joining. Oh, yeah, okay. I know I, I, ch I oh, chatted. I thought I, saw you in, um, I thought I saw you in another one of these, but maybe I just saw you on Slack. I think it was just Slack, but, but still, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so my, my, my main, I, I don't know quite where I would fit in yet in, in helping, but I am very interested in this topic. Um, I worked um, a bit on, on Helm's governance, when, well, initially, um, uh, <clears throat> but it was in a sort of unique position because it was originally part of the Kubernetes project. And so it followed a lot of those guidelines yeah. or not really guidelines, but precedents. And, and I think a lot of those have changed since there have been other graduated projects. Um, or even incubator, many incubator projects. And so um, my goal right now, uh, also helping to co-maintain Flux is, to, you know, I've focused primarily on governance and community related things so far. And I just want to, I just want to like help to be best in class in that way. Not, you know, like in any competitive way, just, just as a, just for our sake to help that project become the best it can. And also just, you know, just uh, take any feedback and solicit feedback and, iteratively update this as we can. That's my main goal. And, and, and if I can, if we can help feedback that, like the feedback loop kind of give that back any of the things that worked back to others, um, that would be great. Um, yeah, that would be really helpful. Um, I, I mean, heck, even a document on what Helm learned through the governance process, you know, starting with, Hey, let's copy Kubernetes to the things that had to change. <laughs> right. um, the because um, a lot of looking at Kubernetes as an example, um, but then we have projects where they have a total of four contributors, and they're like, "We're going to base our governance on Kubernetes," and I'm like, "I think this might be a little complicated for you, right? Where you are right now." Yeah. The, um, yep. Yep. There are definitely lessons learned, and and. Uh... And, and some of those are already documented in the pull request for the original Flux governance doc. Um, yeah. But, but I'm, I'm, I'd be very happy to follow up with putting that somewhere or, yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. Um, uh, if you start writing that up, let us know over Slack. Um, 
uh, or just drop it into a PR on SIG contributor, um, uh, the SIG contributor strategy repo under governance advisories. Because the advisories are all sort of documents about advice rather than sort of specifications for things. And, and okay. we can put anything in there that we feel is reasonably CNCF approved advice. So that'd be a place oh. to start. Okay. Yep. Charles? Yeah, from my side, I know that a lot of those conversations are starting um, as the new year starts. So uh, we, there are some higher level discussions happening that I'm not privy to at the moment. And once that gets uh, pushed down to me, then I'll have a better idea of what I can, or of what we are going to share with the group and the approach that we're going to take. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ihor? Yes. Did, did you have any plans to do anything around CNCF governance in the upcoming year? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, haven't checked uh, anything yet, but uh, uh, contributor strategy wise, I'd like to focus mostly I'd like, to, I'd like to help this group with bootstrapping the website finally, merging all the stuff that uh, has been in the, uh, in the contribute trip and definitely include yep. the governance guidelines there. So this is probably the, the best area where I can help yep. in the nearest future. Cool. Yeah. Um... That's true. In general, we're going to be getting a position of merging stuff to the contribute.cncf.io website. The stuff that's been through some kind of an approval process, which we haven't quite determined yet. Um, our hypothesis is um, the SIG in general approves it in a SIG meeting. Um, we get the sign off from one of our um, TOC liaison um, people. Um, and then it then it goes up. Um, but we we actually will need to have the TOC approve that process. I think they will. Um, the um, okay. Um, the anybody have anything else in terms of of plans for twenty twenty one before we briefly go on to some other stuff. Okay. Um, Paris put a note in our agenda that she intends to pursue the badging proposal. Um, the, um, uh, I don't have more information than that she could make the me meeting. So um, the um, presumably for um, Scott and Allison, the badging proposal, this was originally proposed by DIMS, which was to have a simple system of badges for projects that would help um, potential users and contributors to identify some things about them. Um, you know, not just what level they were at in the CNCF maturity hierarchy, but some other basic things about the project like, um, uh, you know, is the project a uh, specification, you know, some, some basic sort of classes of project, like is the project a specification or a tool or a library? Um, the, um, uh, what's the general form of governance of the project? Um, uh, whether or not um, it's met certain uh, qualifications that um, we've defined as that CNCF has defined as graduation requirements, um, like open governance and um, and other things, um, and that got sort of hung up on not having a volunteer to go through the graduation and due diligence documentation to identify and call out several things that badges could be attached to, because they're reasonably they're empirically definable, um, and. Um, 
that was kind of where we stopped. Um, and so I think Paris is taking that up again. Um, if anybody has an interest in that, um, it would be um, talk to Paris about it, talk about it in Slack. Um, do we have an issue around the badging proposal? Yes, I do. I do have an interest in that personally, um, just in okay. uh, in taxonomies in general, like the <laughs> that weird threshold between enough enough diversity and and too much complexity. It, it's like the devil's kind of in the details there. Um, you know, I was thinking even just as one example, uh, things like um, usership, um, <clears throat> number of users, and uh, for due diligence. Sometimes there's a lot of gray area uh, when you have a project that it, that that is really uh, a distributed software project that has multiple repos, you know? So it's like, what about stars? What does that mean when you've sort of switched from kind of like a major version one to two, like Linkerd did and so on. Um, and like Flux recently just did. So of course that's on my mind, but there are many other things like that um, that might be kind of hard to say, how do you define these things? It's, you know. Yeah, the, um, ah, okay. So there is an open issue for this. Okay. Um, so go ahead and she's kind of focused on the whole taxonomy issue. Um, okay. Which I'm not 100% convinced is the best way to handle badges, but the um, um, just just because these things are a little bit squishy. Um, but I'm not working on it. So um, <laughs> The people who are working on it get to define it. The right. um, so um, the um, and um, the okay. So uh, jump on that um, if you're interested in that. Um, in terms of the end user thing, it's actually that's actually come up before. Um, specifically, the end user requirement um, because based on the nature of some projects, it can be really hard to define who is an end user, particularly specification projects have the problem that you look at and you say, hey, um, we need you know X number of non-vendor end users, but by their nature, specifications are pretty much, are often exclusively adopted by vendors. Um, the, um, so, um, The TOC basically said there's some flexibility there, but they didn't actually want to redefine the rules. Um, the um, and and more of the problem is for the end user requirement. It wasn't necessarily clearly our responsibility. It just came up during a governance discussion. So. Um, the. Um, So, but yeah, but I mean, that would be an example of a badge, right? You know, which has has published lists of end users, for example, um, having having an end user badge. Um, the, um, so, and other things. Um, uh, one of the other things I wanted to briefly introduce um, to get people thinking about it is um, looking at due diligence stuff for um, some other projects that were either being um, introduced to the CNCF or up for graduation. Um, I've noticed that often the technical SIGs are not paying a lot of attention to potential government governance issues or requirements. Um, and I'm wondering whether or not we should introduce the idea of SIG contributor strategy doing a governance review as part of due diligence for projects. That is just um, looking and commenting. Um, the, um, there was just one notable instance where the due diligence involved zero discussion of project governance at all. Um, the, um, and because they were very focused on where the project fit within the technical infrastructure of CNCF stuff. Um, the, um, um, <clears throat> the drawback 
to doing that is, of course, we would then need to commit to staffing that with volunteer time. Um, because if we say this review has to happen and we don't do it, we become a bottleneck. Um, so think about that. Think about whether or not you personally would be interested in helping out with that. Um, the um, I and um, before I introduce the idea to the TOC, because I don't want to introduce the idea unless we're committed to making resources available. Comments? I think it's definitely a good idea. I mean, I think that has to be part of the part of the due diligence process. And I think we need to make sure that somehow make sure that happens. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to help out with that as well. Okay. Me too. Yeah, because you don't have anything else to do, Paris. <laughs> Um, because you don't have anything else to do. The um, oh, and we just did, right. We just discussed that you that because we're discussing upcoming work for the year. You're interested in uh, pursuing the badging thing. Um, Scott, who joined us here for the first time, was also interested in in the badging project. And I com I commented in the doc uh, about the question about interest. So I guess maybe yeah, if anyone yeah. else is interested yeah. there, that can sort of stack up async. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, um, okay. Um, does, Anybody have any other items, comments? I'm gonna look at issues here, but I don't think we have anything we haven't already gone over. I do really quick. Yeah. Um, I'm about to, I'll, I'll send the, um, I'll send it to the Slack channel first, but I just drafted an email to our mailing list which is talking about the final call for comments for certain items. Uh, what I have for governance is uh, everything that's in the current CNCF project template repo, like governance-subproject, governance-maintainer, governance-elections, governance-md. Uh, and then of course I've got some contributor growth items that I'm not gonna talk about here. Um, is there anything else that you need a final call on for uh, for reviews because this is going back to uh, back to what we talked about in our meta meeting, where we're going to try out a graduation process for guidance, where we we do a final call with the with our mini community, and then Sod and and Matt would weigh in from TOC, and then TOC would graduate it quote quote. Um, so this was this is pretty much us implementing that. Anything else that needs to go? Um, the um, we should actually is there is there an issue or some other tracking for this? No, I mean I just did this on my draft, so I'm about to pop it in okay. Slack. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. You, um, I'll comment on individual items because because one or two of those things are not ready for publication, so. Although you were talking about, you're talking about template stuff, yeah? Yeah, pretty much everything that's already inside of the template repo, as well as Oops. the contributor ladder and some other things. So it is, I'm copying the my draft right now, sending it in Slack. Scott? I have one other uh, one other possible agenda item, but I don't know that we're gonna cover all these today. Just thought since, you know, I would at least bring it up and maybe it could be a future topic or maybe it's easy to answer, I don't know. 
but there's an issue. Um, there's an issue in the TOC. Uh, let me grab it real quick. The uh, defining rationale for multi for maintainer multi org requirement from the TOC. The reason that I'm yeah. bringing that up is because it specifically focuses on the uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me the governance working group and and, mm -hmm. and defining criteria, it, it, but it happens to be in the TOC repo. And I'm wondering here it is. I'm wondering if we should consider moving it um, or consider getting the, the working group more more involved. Right now, I think it's it's mainly um, actually yeah. There you you have the first comment, <laughs> uh, Josh. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, this this came up with certain projects, um, yeah. and yeah, unfortunately, that particular thing is kind of in TOC land. Okay. Um, we got the TOC to agree on some on on what the primary goals of the multi-organizational requirement were. Um, the okay. um, and then people brought up a bunch of sort of alternative things and wording changes that they wanted and other stuff, but none of them actually got TOC endorsement. Um, yeah. So. Um, like I'm trying to even remember, there was a proposal in like November um, yeah. to revise that requirement. And um, I said, okay, well, yeah. um, we can work on a revision to it, but first I wanna know that the TOC supports it being revised. And there was no vote to revise it. So ah. okay. um, the- um, So that still belongs in the TOC. Okay, got it. Yeah, so so the, okay. loose, the loose plans honestly are to do what we know we can do, which is, so there's this directory within um, SIG Contributor Strategy Governance that is, um, um, requirements. And so the idea there is to put fill in and detail material for things that are required um, by the CNCF in terms of what they actually mean um, and which advisory documents will help you implement them. So things like a CNCF requirement is open governance um, and you know multiple organizations and um, uh, a few other things, um, adopt the COC. Um, and none of these things really have backing documentation, like as in, okay, we have to adopt the COC. What does that actually mean materially for my project? Um, and that's all open work to try to fill in the ones that relate to governance and supply extra guidance to the projects. Okay. Um, Multi-org just basically jumped to the head of that list because it's been a topic of debate um, due primarily to some projects that um, want to graduate but do not have substantial participation from more than one organization. Yeah, gotcha. Um, the, um, so, um the um you know so um again anybody is welcome to kick some of those off um we haven't sort of documented i expect that when we get to publishing those things our toc liaisons are maybe going to want to actually bring them up in a full toc meeting since once we publish something as a requirements document um, it's, you know, this is what the TOC is going to have to vote on for projects. Um, but the, um, let's, I think we have those checked off in the content list. So if you look under the issues we have contribute, oh, oops, that, that's contributed growth. Uh, governance contract, um, content tracking. So, and if you look under requirements, we have this sort of list of requirements that we've spelled out that are um, that are spelled out in the CNCF graduation thing. And as you see, almost none of those are claimed in terms of writing them up.
a lot of these will cross over to contributor growth because like say full governance documentation essentially necessarily includes a contributor ladder because you have to explain how people advance to project leadership. But a contributor ladder is also a contributor growth document. Thanks, Josh. That that, that yeah. was uh, definitely more yeah. detailed than I than I even expected. But that that gives me an idea of where I might be able to le um, lend a hand conversationally or pull request style or whatever. Um, okay. Okay, and so Paris just published the template doc review for publication. So we should. Okay, I don't know what just happened there. So people in this working group should look there and make sure things are ready before we propose them. Uh, we don't have to do that in this meeting. No, but let's try to get this out the door today because I know yeah. Karen and others have been waiting for reviews. Okay. Um, wait, so are we just checking off which things we're doing? Ah, items looking for initial review, but I don't see any of those. Uh, The um, so there's just some items looking for initial review there. Um, okay, so if if people have availability, if you can actually get to those today, um, we actually have a couple of advisories also within um, governance, and so I will add those to the document that are ready for final review. Um, and I will add those. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I will talk your ears off about taxonomies to whoever wants to listen straight up. Like if you're, if you're here to like, just walk out with me, if you want to spend the next 20 minutes, I would love to talk to you. But if there's no other agenda items only. Either way, Paris, I'm happy to offline it too. Um, okay. Or join whenever that happens, wherever that yeah. happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been I I've been exploding in GitHub issues. So like, <laughs> if you're like, wow, what's going on? That's just all that's going on. So <laughs> uh, you're welcome to use the rest of this time for that if you want to. All right. Um the um Trying to remember where the comment thing is and HackMD. I did put it on the I did put it on the agenda too. Yeah. For the HackMD one. All right, hold on. I'm gonna get out the the taxonomy thing. Oh, Josh, do you mean just how to do the comments in HackMD? Yeah, it's behaving weirdly. Yeah. So. Oh. Okay. Because like I'm trying so to do a comment, 
and instead it's dropping in uh, brackets. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there we go. So if you guys want to discuss taxonomies and badges and stuff, go ahead. I'm Okay. I'm I'm not leading that. <laughs> All right. Well, no, I I mean I didn't want to be like the Kool Aid man like I usually. Okay. Am. So, so, so the the main <laughs> the main right the main meeting is the, let's me say this the main meeting is over. All we right. meet again in two weeks. <laughs> we're all on we're on Slack all the time. Um, uh, Paris and Scott are going to use this time to discuss uh, taxonomies and badging, which you are welcome to stay on for, um, or. Um, if that's not an area of interest for you, um, then sign off and I'll see you in Slack. I'll probably bail, not because I don't love you guys, but it's getting late here and I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Dawn's like, I've Dawn's like, I've heard this from her like 400 times. <laughs> it's so cool. It's not that I don't like it. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye, yeah. Allison. I'm going to go get food. So. Ciao. Adia. Ciao. Bye, Allison. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. All right. So I know that uh, I know that Charles has also heard this forty times. I think I just want to make sure that there's context um, because this is a heavy topic. I'm not gonna lie; it's been something that's been weighing on me for at least a year. Um, here, I just chatted the chatted the the mega the mega issue. Um, so just like, and I mean, and April pointed it out in her comment as well, which is there really only is three classifications of a CNCF project right now. You've got graduated, incubated, and sandbox. And according to each one of those levels, you have to do certain things, right? And um, that's all great. We're all bought into that notion. However, there's more than one way to eat a Reese's. And there's more than one, rate, more than one way to run your governance of your project, as we can see. I mean, Josh and others have already produced like three different kinds of governance documentations and things like that, and structures that are inclusive and that meet the values of CNCF um, and things like that. But that still goes back to the, what I said before, which is there's a thousand ways to eat a Reese's. So what we've been doing though is, uh, and, and I see others doing this is a lot of the times they're like just copy Kubernetes or just copy so-and-sos. But there's actually like some thought that needs to go into this, number one. And that's what the governance group, like this governance group is trying to figure out. But number two, a lot of this stuff can also further get refined into more sort of, um, like taxonomies, if you will, because when people say copy Kubernetes, they don't necessarily, some of them may just say copy Kubernetes, but some of them are also giving this innuendo of, oh, that means you should be a contributor community. Because according to Nadia in her learning with, in her learning in public book, she calls Kubernetes, she doesn't really call Kubernetes, but you can read the description of what a federation is. And federation is pretty much where Kubernetes is today, which is a contributor community and it's extremely rare. So what we're trying to do here, or as I think our next steps are, is really break down, do we have different types of communities here that are based on maybe like the Nadia definition? And then second thing is, do we need our own classifications? Meaning like if Nadia's aren't good for us, like should we rework classifications that are good for us? And then the third thing is, are there classifications that aren't good for us? And maybe that's the stuff that we've been fighting about, not fighting, that's a, that's a wrong word, but we've been going back and forth a lot about, which is, oh, does this project need a steering committee? Well, if they fall under maybe like a club bucket, you know, like that kind of thing. There's like, I think there's a better way to map needs with like the project value and stuff like that, 
right? So I think those are kind of like the, the three things that I'm thinking in my head right now, as far as our next steps are concerned. And so I like, I wanted to like, like, this is just so abstract right now. So I really just kind of wanted to, I guess, start, you know, start really getting some more concrete things down, which is our next step, because this also flows into the badging concept, because the idea behind the badging was just pretty much to elevate what kind of governance structure you have on a README so that it's not buried in a million governance files. So things like governance slash steering, like you would have like security checked past uh, on a README. So this all kind of goes in together and could kind of flow in really nicely together because what I'm saying is that you don't need to operate like Kubernetes to have a CNCF project and to be in open governance. Um, but you do but you do probably have to have certain qualification and characteristics of open governance. And like for instance, in Nadia's book, something like a toy might be okay for sandbox, but that's not gonna be okay for incubation. And we could like draw that kind of stuff out. So now I'm going to stop talking because that was a lot. And like, where do y'all think as far as like, if we were to kick this can down the road, like, what do you think our next step would be as far as like breaking ground here? I have a question. I have a question, mm -hmm. first of all, um, Shoot. just in terms of <clears throat> framework. <coughs> Just a basic one. It's kind of like a user story. Yeah. Uh, who who are the who are the badges for? I, I skimmed over the the issue. I didn't really see. I saw some implications that maybe it's for. Basically, is it for uh, is it for end users to understand where a project is to help them understand what trust level they should be able to put in a project? Because that's what badges are often yes. for. You know. That, like that labels. Is the, that is the number one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. That is the number okay. one. That is exactly okay. right. But then there's also 99 other reasons. But keep going. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, I get. I, so yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, badges are basically just um, indicators that otherwise could be labels or 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 anything else, um, but they just have the extra weight of being official, officially decreed by X organization by CNCF in this case. So it's like, to me, that's what it seems like the badges thing is for, but it sounds almost like the idea is to, to secondarily use them for 99 other things, which might partly be maybe why it, there's some debate. I, yep. I haven't been part of any of the debates, but, yep. but you, know, um, you know, they can be used for organizing for an organization, you know, but, but primarily just for organizing where the things at are in their badging status. You know, it, it, it almost seems like labels that relate to the badges would be better for things like having CNCF organize things or, you know, identify needs or things yep. like that, you know? Um, so, exactly. Okay, just yep. wanted to level set or understand. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's our main, like if we were going, if we're like, go, you know, going for some kind of MVP and only one use case out the door, I think we would go for that like user, because that's really where, that's where the whole conversation actually started, which was the badges okay. initially, like, and then it grew, then I read her book. And then that's when I'm like, the, the idea grew to like taxonomies. But like the idea was really like stemming from, you know, the service mesh side of the house where it's like, well, like, you know, the, like identification of governance and, and ease of participation, which is a big one, right? Companies want to know how easy it is to participate and not only participate, but what's the, what's the, the likelihood of ownership. So like that kind of stuff is always just buried in docs and most end users either A, don't read them anyway, or B, like don't care or whatever it is. However, when you're also going in through a like a graduation process with CNCF, which comes to the number two persona is like the CNCF community member slash steering committee member slash GB member. Then they can kind of start comparing apples to apples instead of trying to compare project X to project Y and like wondering why this one doesn't do this one. 
when it's because, oh, their targeted values and principles are contributor community versus a stadium or a club. And like, it's okay to have stadiums and clubs in open source, right? As long as it's documented as a stadium or a club. Um, it's, it's like, it's the, it's the crap that you see where it's like somebody's advertising that they're a contributor community and they're not a contributor community. That's where you really start to see like the gloves come off and people go, that's not open source. And you're like, what are you talking about? That's yeah. open source. Aren't, so, aren't all yeah. CNCF projects required to be contributor communities though? That's, and that's the, so there you go. That's the, that's the, the debate number one. Are all CNCF projects required to be contributor communities? Boom, there you go. That's that's it, in my opinion. I think that's something that we should find out, that we should debate. That's exactly right. That's what I mean. So like, it's that's, almost like I, it's almost like I, I it, go ahead, no, go ahead, Josh. It, it's what the existing documentation says, is that they are required to be contributor communities. Well, so like, let's define contributor communities, right? Like that, like that's like, you know, Scott's like, Scott yeah. knows where I'm going with this, right? It's kind of like- Yeah, what does that mean exactly? Because that, that's precisely what some of the, like the, the main, the main points, um, you know, came down to when, I, so I, I looked at all of the governance docs for all of the CNCF projects, Sandbox, Incubator, um, I mean, I'm sure we all have to, but, 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 but specifically trying to point by point understand if there was something in it I didn't understand or I didn't think I understood already why it was in it or why it was missing from it, I tried to reach out to somebody from that community to talk with them about it and try to understand like what, what, what's going on. Because I, I just wanted this next, uh, in this particular case, with Flux governance to be um, just to kind of cover the basis. And I probably covered too many bases, <laughs> future cases that we might not even... Um, have, but but I just happen to know, like, for instance, with Helm, we ran into things later that could have been cut off earlier on, you know, or anticipated earlier on. Um, so, I mean, sorry, point is that this is one of those questions. What is, what exactly is a contributor community? For, so, so it's, it's, and that's what that one issue that I brought up earlier, I think right before Paris, you got on, or maybe right when you got on, um, there were, I, I had asked initially, and Josh gave a, a very good explanation of why that issue needs to be in t the TOC repo, but that's asking about multi-org requirement. And, yes. and, and, and that's, that's one of them. It's like, it, does that mean that if you don't have an exact definition of that, or even what would, would, it, would it be, then you aren't a community? You know, you're just a company with maybe one or two other people, you know? Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, that, Sorry, all that, that might have stuff, been long-winded. No, yeah. that was great. That, that is, the, yeah. like, that's, that's exactly right. Like, okay, cool. so, and then my other thing too, is maybe there's different types of contributor communities. Like, and, and Nadia, she went on a podcast, like, you know, after she wrote the book and she said explicitly this, she says, I really hope that people take this taxonomy piece and break it down for them to make it make sense to them and their orcs because that's so true. It's just because like, we're always debating these kind of like abstract things of like, well, what does this mean? And like, does this mean that I need this thing too? And I think it's just giving, um, giving some like, um, some logic behind the, the art. I don't know, you know, like, <laughs> um, so yeah, so Scott, it would be cool to talk to you, because especially if you've, you've read all the governance docs, it would be cool to talk to you about like, because I'm just kind of wondering too, like I might even throw a question out in, in the maintainer circle channel. I'm wondering like, how would, how would y'all define your projects? If here, here's the four buckets, federation, club, toy, stadium, and we give them the exact definition that Nadia has for each, I would be curious where folks put themselves, where folks put their projects on these like made up taxonomy scales, right? Because that's the kind of stuff where it's like, you can grow into these. Cause like, for instance, most projects probably start out as toys, meaning like they're just like code thrown over the wall with nothing like nothing there yet as far as governance. And like, that's kind of thing too, where it's like, okay, well you've hit the incubated stage. You need not to be a toy now. Right, like that's, I feel like that's kind of the, where I'm like, where I'm flowing with this too. So it'd be cool to talk to you about like, 
how we can collect all that data. Like, and it's not a survey because people hate it and I'm not doing another survey. Um, but like how we can get like people's perceptions of what their projects are uh, and like get people to talk about that. So. Yeah, I, I personally need to catch up uh, I, because I have not read her. Uh, God, come on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I haven't my, listened to the podcast. I haven't read the book or yeah, that little bit here oh gosh, no, in your issue, but I'm I will. I'm serious. Um, you're going to be enlightened, friend. Okay. I'm serious. And I, 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 owe Char <laughs> I owe Charles the book. Like I pretty much fell off the planet the last two weeks. I was like, see y'all, planet dump. Like. <laughs> You earned it. I uh, I ended up getting a a Kindle copy, so oh, okay, good. Yeah, pay it forward to someone else for sure. Okay, cool. Did you read it yet? Now I'm gonna grill you. <laughs> I also have been on vacation, so no, I, I did not read it. Yes, that's what I like to hear. Exactly. That's What's what I wanted to hear level? all day. <laughs> I mean, like for example, are we talking about like 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 this kind of a commitment level? Or are we talking about no, like, much less, oh, sorry, much less. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, much. Okay. It's it's two hundred pages, short a, a okay. short book, um, and and it's like her act like the chapters that she does are actually so well like site mapped and information architected out that you can just jump into certain chapters. So yeah, totally. Like she even she even kind of in the, like the odd thing was she almost broke the book down kind of like how we operate here in contributor strategy. So that's always just like. Oh, Oh, it's just like all this validation like, ah! uh, <laughs> but yeah so I think it would be really cool if we could like start to think about that like is that the criteria right not only open governance but contributor community and if that's the case are there different types of contributor communities uh yes we already know that because like I said Josh and folks already broke down that there's like at least three different types of governance in those in those types of environments. So, all right, Scott, we got work to do. Okay, well, I just bought the Kindle version. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just like, it just sucks watching people go back and forth on Twitter about is this open source, is this not open source? And that really, it's really about like the, like the ease of participation and how people like to work in open source and the values that they've come to uh, get used to in whatever community that they're in. And like, yeah, that that's all open source and great, but it's all different and still great. So <clears throat> it is. Yeah. And whether it's FOSS or open source, et cetera. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got into, uh, without like wasting anyone's time here, but just as a slight context, I, I got into um, free and open source software, mainly as a hobby years ago before my, my daughter was born, before I ever, ever considered uh, actually doing this as a job, um, mainly because I was involved in the uh, various open source culture um, movement movements and free culture movements and different things, but they are very different things. And it's free and open source software is just kind of like a very, uh, or just not free, but open source software. It's very, it's a very interesting territory because um, there are very strict definitions, and it's all, it's all um, legal. It's all licensing at, at this point. So I think governance is a little bit less defined because there are there are um, there's no official world government. <laughs> so people that have tried to try, uh, you know, laws already been figured out, you know, uh, you've got licenses and you've got laws and then you can debate it in court, you know, if you need to. Uh, and then the, so there's precedent and then there's, it's always evolving, right, as needed. But governance, it's one of those things where you've just got precedent and you've got uh, aspiration and that's it. And, and so there's a lot of different schools of thought. So like there are major categories of governance, you know, um, ideas about what open governance is, but, but uh, there's no real official body that could ever give a decree of, of what that means. So you kind of have to just keep going and, and hope that you kind of snowball more and more support, you know, and then it's seen as, as, uh, as value, you know, like, for example, if you look at open, I know uh, Chris A uh, contributed a lot, maybe some of you did too, I don't know, in that 
open governance um, um, GitHub. Um, oh, yeah, project. mostly Chris, mostly Chris, yeah. Yeah, um, and there's another one that sounds almost exactly the same if you Google search for it, that's that, that, uh, that GitHub promotes um, that's on, on their checklist for open source projects that's not the same thing and they don't cover all the same stuff. Um, so I just, I'm not exactly sure how to square that circle, but I do think that when we're talking about open source and debates about like how CNCF defines projects, I think we really, unless I'm really missing something, which I very well could be, but I think we really need to keep the ideas separate between, between licensing and governance because they, they really don't, there's very, very little overlap. Yep. Yeah, but that's, and, and I think that's the, like, you know, one of the, like, because uh, people just kind of lump everything in with opens the term open source, right? That's why yeah. I'm just like, how can we break this down a little bit more, right? Like, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, some, some point in time, they were like, wow, there's a lot of birds. I'm sure they don't eat all the same thing, you know? <laughs> it's just like open source. Like, we don't all do business the same ways. Yeah. Yeah, that you are. And I'll try to find the one if I can before this meeting ends. Like, I mean, I don't know if it really matters. You can find it through GitHub. It's they 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 have it on their checklist. So, um, I think it might. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so I again, I I don't know Paris. I guess where, where um, if if this is just like a completely private project. Um, or if this is something that no, um, this is not private. Nothing I do is private. Please, you can do uh, what, whatever, whatever grandstanding or soapbox or like announcement channel that you have for other people to help us. Feel free. Um, I actually have to. Oh, I oh do, sorry. I actually oh, meant the open. Open. I, I actually meant the open governance. Oh. Uh, dev and the open governance thing. I, I don't know if there's a um, if there's if it just if it just happens to have overlap because Chris is working on it, or if, or if there is some sort of CNCF interest in that, or if it's just totally, totally independent. That's what I meant. Not, not the, not the badging thing. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. Eeyore, do you have no, a no, okay. response to that? Uh, say, say it again, please. So which, which project are you speaking about? I, I was talking about the open governance GitHub org and, and that open governance GitHub project that's trying to define you know, to take a stab at defining open governance in, a, in an independent way. I was wondering if CNCF is, if there's an interest in having an affiliation there, or if that's just kind of seen as totally independent at this point. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's independent and can be, can be related, uh, not under the CNCF scope, but more under the Linux Foundation, like the, the whole Linux Foundation is their organization okay. here. Um, so yeah, I mean, like Chris is involved into multiple areas in the open source world, so I'm not, I'm not surprised to see to his to see his name in the, in the various spaces Got that it. are not related to CNC directly. Got it. I was I guess I only brought it up because I was thinking of you know in the spirit of not re, you know not to muddy the waters on what open source means, but in the spirit of just generally speaking, not reinventing the wheel unnecessarily. Um, it seems like we've got some certainly some overlap of contributors there and uh, in the um, governance working group. And I was just thinking kind of where do we put the effort and how do we, you know, yeah. especially Paris, since you're talking about uh, really just categorization and organization yeah. of, of what things mean generally for end users. Yep. I'm always saying to Alexis, no, I'm not trying to make this Kubernetes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. no. <laughs> I love all open source, dang it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll follow up with you. Uh, I guess, I mean, that can be just, yeah, let's I, I don't know that there's anything actionable except for that yet. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's think of some actionable things that we can follow issues on. I guess that's our next step, which is, all right, let's, let's get some goals and figure out what our next discovery step is. All right, that's it. That's it for my rants. <laughs> cool. I'll, I'll get started reading this book. Yes, Charles, you're late. No, I'm kidding. I am. I am. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's so good, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm so good. I'm so, it's so good.
Like, I, I guess I just, it's so good for me because I do this all the time. You know, it's like, if you're a surgeon and you read like, like some, like some thing validating your new heart surgery, you're like, ah, yeah, that's how I felt when I read this book. I was just like, so <laughs> I hope everybody's doing all right, though, on a more personal level. Eeyore, I really haven't seen you in a long time, bud. I mean, not necessarily Zoom seeing you, but like, like really yeah. for real seeing you. It's been a long time. It's been a long time for all of us. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to see each other later this year. Fingers I'm ready. For for Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm ready to start booking stuff for Los Angeles. Like I'm ready, I'm, I think I'm ready. I'm almost, like I'm gonna probably wait until the end of January and see where like, you know, all the, all the, the, the panty stuff is. But uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to book some, book us some parties for, <laughs> for KubeCon LA. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Scott, they're like all the all the kids have taught me there's like supposedly 40 ways to say pandemic now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard what is it? Uh what are the other ones? Um because Panny was the one that stuck with me. <laughs> it's there's beautiful. Like... It's beautiful. <laughs> Well, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it, it's one of those things that can't be trivial, trivialized, but it just gives it a little bit of levity and I kind of like that. Exactly, exactly, yes. <laughs> Charles, we will meet one day. Yeah, I think we all need that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I hope that that does resolve by the end of this year. That would be, that would be amazing. Yes, I want us to have like a humongous like maintainer party. That's what I want. And then it, it, it then I'll then my 2021 will be will end in a nice way. So that's fine. If anybody wants a long term, what's to, what's to know my long term goals? There you go. Yeah. Hey, uh, maybe um, <clears throat> end of your party working group. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, honestly, I need to, I need to think about that more. Yeah. Eeyore knows, Eeyore knows I've been trying to, I've been trying to, to pull those, to pull, start to pull those bells a little bit. <laughs> yeah. There you is have, a light at the 11 months to do so. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've already no, started last time. year. <laughs> yeah. Last year I already started the, I feel like, I, you know, I, I already started the CNCF needs a contributor summit, you know. I'm laying laying the eggs, getting getting the idea out there. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh, it's been real. I'm gonna go to my next stand up where luckily I'm not due for technically my status update for another 10 minutes. So that's why I'm dragging my feet. <laughs> okay. See y'all. Well, it's nice Bye, to see y'all. It's so Bye. nice to see you, Scott. So glad you came. Yeah, likewise, yeah. me too. Thanks. Bye.